Okay guys, while you've got the timing gun out, what I was showing you is that you can press on the throttle here. Okay, every carburetor is going to have that. Just twist the throttle by hand and you want to watch that timing mark. And if it's working properly, the timing mark should advance when you're raising the RPMs and it should retard again when you lower the RPMs back down. You want to rev it up through the range. Go up to 3,500, 4,000. It's going to be loud and the fan's going to be blowing around, so obviously don't touch it. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're looking at that. Watch the timing mark move both directions. If it doesn't retard all the way, if it doesn't advance, you have a problem with the distributor. Stop. Don't adjust the carbs. Because a lot of times what ends up happening is the distributor isn't, uh, it, usually it won't retard. So, so it'll throw the weights out, it'll advance, and then it won't go all the way back to where it was. So what do people do? They reset the distributor and they reset the timing to that new point. But now instead of this much advance, you only have this much. And so it's not advancing fully. So that means at higher RPMs especially, you are pretty far retarded compared to where you're supposed to be. If you're retarded, you're not getting a complete burn. It's going to make it smell like gas out of the exhaust because you're not burning all of the fuel. And what do you do? You go and you lean out the carburetors to compensate. It's the wrong thing to do. Do not touch the carburetors until you are sure that the distributor is working properly and that your timing is set. Otherwise, you're just going to mess it up. So anyway, if you've done all that, now we're on the side of the car with the carburetors. We've got this warmed up to operate temperature already I just shut it off so that you can hear me talk uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to start the engine and we're going to first check the balance between the two carbs and then we're going to check the mixture and the tools you're going to need generally you can get away with just a flathead screwdriver and then you're going to need a unison like this one uh, just any kind of flow meter there's a few different styles and just in case you can't hear me with the engine running uh, there's a little float here and it's going to go up to at some point in the middle of that range. It is not important how high on the meter it goes because you can adjust how high on the meter it goes by twisting this little guy on the inside anyway. You can make it go right up to the top if you want to. So you can have it in or out of the range. Um, what's important is having the two carbs act the same. If one carb is pulling more air than the other, then you know you need to make an adjustment. So that's what we're going to check out. first thing we're going to do is we're going to check our balance. Okay. So that's a little under halfway up. Oh, look at that. Let's see if we can adjust the range on that, get anything on them. Okay. So this one's just barely off the stop, and this one's most of the way up. So in a case like that, this carburetor is not running quickly enough. I want to loosen the throttle linkage. And depending on where your RPMs are, you either want to speed up this one or slow down this one. Do a little bit at a time and just keep rechecking it. That's how you balance them. 
Now check your RPM because you want to make sure you're not idling too quickly. If you are, you just back off both of them the same amount until your RPMs are correct. The next thing you want to check is your mixture. And you want to raise the piston, a little over a millimeter is fine, it doesn't have to be very much. Raise the air piston and what you're listening for is uh, the difference in RPM, if it smooths out, right? And so if you raise the air piston and it gets smoother, well then you know adding air makes it smoother, you're burning too rich. If you raise the piston and it makes the engine die off, now you know that more air is bad, so it's already too lean. And you can get pretty close that way. Let's see where we're at. That one might be a tad too rich. This one seems about right. Okay, so we're gonna lean out this one. And to, to make it more rich, you want the jet lower. To make it more lean, you want the jet up. And so the jet is controlled by these on the bottom. We're going to screw it in because we want it a little bit more lean. Okay. And now we've got no difference in sound between those. The, the mixture was actually pretty close on these, but if you can't remember which way to turn those jets, uh, trust me, if you turn it far enough in the wrong direction, you'll know. Just start going back the other way. Uh, but you want it so that they're both even. And then, of course, you want to double check your mixture. Uh, I'm sorry, double check your balance. And that's all there is to it. Okay, now a question that I get a lot is when you put the air filters back on, is that going to make the mixture richer? And technically, yes, it is. But if your air filters aren't restricted or dirty or somehow causing a clog where you're not getting in as much air as you're supposed to be, that difference is going to be very minimal. You're going to need a gas analyzer basically to even see that difference. So if anything, what you do is you set it up where it is, maybe make it a tad leaner uh, so then it'll richen up when you put the air filters on. But really, it's going to be pretty close. And so I wouldn't even bother with that. A little bit too rich is better than being a little bit too lean. Anyway, uh, it's safer for the engine. And so uh, that's what I would recommend. So you don't have to worry about the air filters. Tune it with them off. When you're done, just put them back on. Uh, we're going to clean up these air filters and re-oil them before we put them back on the car because these are K&Ns, and so uh, we have to uh, clean them up and then put on a new, uh, put on some new filter oil so that they can work properly. Uh, but outside of that, that is everything that we need to do. We're going to bolt it back together, and this tune-up is done. So anyway, guys, if you have any questions, post it in the comments below. Uh, let us know if you've got any tips or tricks. Um, maybe it'll help somebody that's reading through the comments. And outside of that, like, comment, subscribe. It really does help the channel. And see you guys soon.